uh, the talk I'm going to give is really about the fourth industrial revolution and um, how it relates to uh, power utilities and uh, the future of our power utilities. And I guess a good starting point is to look at this term 4IR, fourth industrial revolution, and to be very clear what I mean by it. So to start with, um, the question is, what is the fourth industrial revolution? Um, almost every time you turn on the radio, listen to TV, uh, watch TV, uh, read a newspaper, hear um, government or corporate leaders speak, this phrase 4IR comes out somewhere. And I think very few of us really have an agreed definition of what it is. And it was interesting that in Parliament a few weeks ago, the Deputy President was asked to define 4IR and didn't do very well at doing it. And um, I just want to try to sort of uh, define my terms before I speak about it any further. So we, we've got a few definitions of uh, 4IR. And just if you could, in your mind for a minute, think how you define it. And then I'll uh, give you a few choices and you can um, tell me which works for you. So the first uh, definition we frequently see is we are told that it's a whole lot of technologies. So we've got this magic bottle of all these new, new colored balls and we pour them out and we see words like 3D printing, AI, blockchain, um, uh, big data analytics, machine learning, and we just name all those things and we say, that's 4IR, it's all that stuff. And that's how some people um, define it. They just start listing technologies. So that's one way we can define it. Uh, the second way we, we uh, frequently see is we see a sort of um, a tidal wave coming in. And we see these waves appearing, um, what came in 2016, 2017, 2018, and the amount that they are impacting business, and we see these technologies impacting business. And, and 4IR has to do with how this bottle of technologies is impacting business. And we see these kind of diagrams that sort of shows where we are in that um, approaching tide of these new things. Um, the third way that we see it is, as the name says, it's the fourth industrial revolution. So Klaus Schwab, who's the um, uh, president of the World Economic Forum, uh, wrote a book in 2016, and it was called the fourth industrial revolution. And Schwab uh, looks at a number of um, previous industrial revolutions. So we started off with um, uh, steam power and water power and the uh, way that changed the weaving industry. And that was the first industrial revolution. And the second had to do with um, a mass production and the introduction of uh, good old electricity, which we'll hear more about later. And that's the second industrial revolution. And then the emergence of computing and the information age, and that's the third industrial revolution. And now we're told we're in the fourth industrial revolution where all these things are now coming together. And uh, that's the other way we define 4IR. Um, so which of these works for you? Could, could I have um, a show of hands? Which, would, uh, um, uh, which of you would kind of choose the first way to define it? A list of technologies. Uh, who would choose the second? And who would choose the third? So most of you go for this 4IR. And I think that my problem is none of these really work. So my choice would be a fourth choice. Because I think none of it, it all feels quite arbitrary. So what technologies will we put into our bottle? Uh, 
on that map of emerging technologies and disrupting business, where would we put things and who decides where to put them? In terms of these lines in the sand, we could be in the fifth industrial revolution or, we, or the third and a half. It, it seems very arbitrary. And maybe there's only been one industrial revolution and unwinding as we speak. So I think none of these work. In 26, uh, 2011, um, Germany came up with this con concept of Industry 4.0. And Industry 4.0 is based on four design principles. And the four design principles work for me because it gives us some rigor that we can use to try to define it. So the four principles are, and I'll kind of unpack these, but it's interconnection, decentralized um, decisions, information transparency, and um, digital assistance. And these four things coming together uh, simultaneously, and that's the big thing, made up the design principles for Industry 4.0. And to just unpack these quickly, um, the concept of interconnection, where we are moving um, from the, um, the kind of internet that we know, which is the internet of people, to an internet of things and an internet of everything. So this idea of interconnection says everything is now connected on a common network, and it lets us share information, collaborate, and reach common goals. So this idea of, of connection becomes important. To do that, we need common communication standards, and we need to worry about security if we're connecting everything together. So that's the first principle of connectivity. Uh, the second principle is not a new one. It's a very, very old one. And it's about um, hierarchical control. So it says, if we have the world with smart things in it, and we let those smart things work in a hierarchy, and we let the lower level things look after themselves, and not until you come to the pinnacle, w w and you start to, to worry about conflicting goals and dealing with exceptions, and um, and uh, looking at interferences, you you can leave the the sub parts to look after themselves, and and in fact that's how the human body works. Your your brain isn't thinking every uh, half a second. Breathe, uh, heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. Your heart is a um, autonomous uh, system that looks after itself, and. Uh, um, um, Self-driving cars, for example, would work like this, where you have a hierarchy of control. So that's decentralized um, decisions. Uh, the third one is a very important one, and it's about this idea of digital twins. If we can create a digital model of the real world and make that model as realistic as it possibly can be, and we connect our model to the real world so it becomes a complete, up-to-date, real-time duplicate of that world and it can influence the world through actuators, then in the digital twin, or using the digital twin, we can run scenarios, we can do optimization. There's a lot you can do on the digital twin that you couldn't do on the physical world. So um, digital twins are a very important aspect. And then uh, the, um, the last one, and maybe the most contr um, controversial one, is robotics, where we have machines doing intelligent things or doing things that humans do. So in the first three industrial revolutions, it was um, taking over the sort of muscle work. And now in this fourth industrial revolution, the uh, digital assistant is taking over some brain work. And um, ideally, the human still has a, an, an, an important role of working together with a digital assistant, but um, the, the controversy is maybe you don't even need the human at all, that the machine can do everything. So this is where people fear for loss of jobs and the machines will take over, but this idea of having digital assistants. And I think if you take those four jigsaw puzzle pieces and put them together 
and have them all working, then you have something that's really different from anything we've ever seen before. So to me, that is really the fourth industrial revolution. It's these four concepts converging. Um, I just have to say one more thing, and I've focused here on the uh, digital, but there's um, another part of the fourth industrial revolution that's looking at new materials and biologicals and things that are not about um, kind of digital, but also implies a revolutionary change to how we do things. So I kind of see the world in two ways. One is, is evolution. And in the digital world, we've always seen evolution. We've always gone from today's technology to emerging new technologies. When we saw mobile appearing, we um, didn't have a revolution. We just started to absorb mobile into the things we did until we were doing a lot of things with mobile. When cloud appeared, it started to evolve into the way we do things. So we've always seen this evolving of our technology. And to me, that's not the fourth industrial revolution. That's just evolving technology. The real fourth industrial revolution to me is where we see revolutionary change, step changes in what we do. So if you bring together those four things and you put very novel business models together and do things in very different ways, uh, then you will see the so-called fourth industrial revolution. So uh, that's my terminology, and I think that kind of sets the context for what this um, uh, um, conference is really about, about the fourth industrial revolution and the power utilities of the future. And without sort of unpicking it, we could go back to those four principles and we could say, within the power industry, how do we go about um, applying those four things to um, things like um, generation, transmission, um, distribution, and how do they, would bringing all of that together change the way that power utilities work in this fourth industrial revolution. And I think if you start thinking about that and, and um, kind of looking at where these, these forces, the, the uh, digital twins, the internet of everything, the um, uh, um, hierarchical control and digital assistance, and apply those principles into specific examples in the power industry, you'll start to see dramatically different things um, happening. And uh, various people have grouped them um, together into what they call the three Ds. So what we're going to see is decentralization. So our traditional power utilities are very hierarchical and very centralized. So the national grid hangs it all together. Uh, we've seen these huge power utilities emerge that is a centralized version of power delivery. In the fourth industrial revolution, what we're going to see using the technologies that I've mentioned, the, the amazing ability to decentralize, to do things on a micro scale, so microgrids and uh, community uh, distribution and very different ways to... Um, to, to decentralize how power distribution works. A digitization, we'll see a massive jump in the amount of digital that happens in the power industry and a sort of modernization and a rapid change in terms of adopting digital platforms for um, uh, creating electricity, distributing in, uh, uh, power, paying for energy, power pools, all of that will happen through uh, digitization. And uh, what those two things lead to is a democratization where, where, where people power will, will have a true meaning, where people will not be. So we've seen through um, something like blockchain and um, uh, um, uh, Bitcoin, we've seen this... Um, uh, uh, um, kind of breaking away from centralized control and ways that people can 
in a more democratic way, make uh, decisions about how they behave and how they work with power and energy. So I think the three Ds are becoming very important in the power sector of the future. So um, this uh, quote I've got uh, right at the bottom, it says uh, that the uh, power utilities will benefit from 4IR as all those innovations that we're seeing will enable uh, more automated coordination and control of the grid, um, optimizing consumption in relation to production and customer needs. And I think that's what the three Ds means for me. So um, I think that's what the future looks like. Uh, just a final word on skills. It was one of the things that, um, uh, that um, in fact, working at WITS and, and um, talking to, um, to Chris, um, the power engineer of the future will, be will need to be able to deal with these technologies very comfortably. And because it's emerging so quickly, it's quite hard to say how the curriculum of a university would have to change to deal with the future utility engineer, with the future, future power consumer, um, in terms of kind of knowing how to deal with these, with the three Ds in this emerging industry. And I think my feeling about skills of the future in terms of the 4IR is that we now have to focus on four things when we train and educate young people. Uh, the four things are a solid foundation. People have to understand the principles very well and have to build up on that. So we uh, need to, to really have the, the uh, foundational knowledge very firmly cemented in place. We need people to be self-learners. People are going to have to learn themselves more than we've ever had to do in the past. So people are really having to or needing to learn how to learn. And that's going to be a key thing in education in the future. Um, the third one is really around um, communication. Because as we, we, we move into this more connected world, it's uh, becoming a team sport. It's, it's kind of people will work in teams, people will collaborate and communicate. And communication skills are going to be essential. And, f and finally, because we are going to see rapid change, it's very important for people to have an entrepreneurial mindset where people have to be able to see opportunities and grab them. It's, I was, in fact, um, uh, reading yesterday that if you look at, at young people today, they are, are planning careers with a four-year timeline. They're not thinking of a job for the next, un well, until they retire. People see what they're going to do as something they're going to do for the next four years, and then they're happy to change and move on. So I think that we really have um, a different world that we're getting into. So that's my bit. Um, if you want to contact me, here's my email address. And um, uh, that's my bit, and I'll hand over to Rob. Thank you.